everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you make this absolutely beautiful and very squishy puff flower square. Now it has a very pretty join, so I think this would look beautiful if you did it in a cotton yarn and pinned it out and blocked it to truly show off that beautiful lacy join and it would look lovely as a shawl. But in this video I'm going to show you how you make the motif and the all important join as you go. If this is your first time to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now all the information for this puff flower square, I don't really know what to call it, puff circle flower square, <laughs> All the information on the yarn I have used, the hook sizes and the written pattern is over on my blog. I have a link to it in the description box below, so feel free to check that out. If at any point you have any questions, feel free to shout in the comment section below. I have timestamps listed also in the description box so you can jump to any row that you need immediately and you can cut out any unnecessary explanations I may be putting in that you don't necessarily need. For this tutorial I'm going to be using Ice Yarn Magic Light and I'm going to be teaming it with Shapier's Colour Crafter. So these two are the perfect match for each other in ply, in weight, in feel. They're just, they were made to go together. But you are free, of course, to use any yarn and any hook size that you would like. Now, just a quick tip about a puff. It's good to be a little bit looser than you usually would because then you get a nice fat squashy puff. And with that in mind, I will be using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook rather than the usual four millimeter that I would use with these yarns. So without further ado, let's jump straight into how you make this beautiful puff circle square. Okay, so using my Ice Yarn Magic Light and a four and a half millimeter crochet hook, we're going to be starting with a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to do the magic ring, I do have a video on how to do that, which I will link in the description box below. So starting with the magic ring, you're gonna go ahead and chain four, which counts as your first double crochet and a chain two. So into the center ring, you're going to put two double crochet. Chain two. And you're going to repeat that six more times. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain two. Do that six more times. So two double crochet, chain two. All right, so at this point you should have seven sets, excluding this initial chain four, chain four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of two double crochet with chain twos in between. So to finish the round, we're going to end with one double crochet and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the second chain of your chain four. Now, if you can't find the second chain and it's a bit too low down, you can go in the third, it's fine. You don't need to be too precise. I just like to go into the second chain so that you maintain the chain two spaces. So once you have done that, go ahead and tighten up your magic ring and it's all gonna start to crush up a tiny bit in here. But you should have, including this one double crochet and joining it to your chain. You should have 16 stitches in total. So eight groups of two double crochet with chain two spaces in between. Now, like I said, <laughs> it's quite tight at this point. So for round two, you're going to go ahead and slip stitch 
into this chain two space. So immediately after where you just joined to the chain two here, slip stitch into the space next to it. Now chain two, which counts as the start of your very first puff stitch. So because this chain two is here, at the beginning puff is going to be done a little bit differently to the rest of the ones in the round. So for this beginning puff, we're working into this chain two space where you just slip stitched, yarn over, go into the chain two space, catch the yarn at the back, come through and pull up. Do that once, do it again. So that's twice and do it one more time, that's three times. So you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. Now to complete this puff, you're going to yarn over and draw through the first six loops and leave this very last one, leave that one. You don't wanna come through that one as well. Just leave that one on the hook. So you've got two loops and then yarn over and pull through those two. And that is your puff stitch done. Now that chain two puffs out the side, which makes this initial one look like it's going to be the same thickness as the others. So chain two, and now into the same chain two space, I'm gonna show you how we're going to do the puffs for the rest of the round. So instead of yarning over and going in and coming back through three times, we're actually going to do that four times. So that was once, twice, three, four times. <laughs> it starts to get a little bit tight in here. And just like before, to finish your puff, yarn over and pull through everything except this loop. Leave this one on your hook. Have two loops, yarn over and pull through two. So you've got two puff stitches with chain two in between, all into that same chain two space. Now, chain two. And in the remaining chain two spaces all the way around, you are going to put puff stitch. So that's a yarn over four times puff stitch, chain two, puff stitch, all into the same space, then chain two, move on to the next one, puff, chain two, puff, chain two, all the way around, and I will meet you back here to show you how you finish this round. So to finish the round, don't forget that very last chain two, and you're going to go ahead and slip stitch, not to this first puff stitch, but into the chain two space itself. Now, before you go any further, because it will all be sort of curling in, like you can see on the side, there's, we're putting a lot of stitches into a very small space, flatten it down on a flat surface or on your knee, and you just want to double check you have the right amount of puff stitches before we continue. So you will have eight, sets of puff stitch chain two puff stitch with chain two in between so 16 puffs in total with chain two spaces in between everything and in between the puffs i am using way too many words here <laughs> 16 puffs but grouped together like so now if you haven't got enough puffs go back and just make sure you haven't missed going in between your double crochets your sets of two from the round below, or if you've got too many, just check that you haven't accidentally gone in between the double crochets themselves. So once you have 16 puffs and you're happy, we can move on to round three. So for round three, we are going to start like we did before with a slightly skinnier puff. So chain two, and for this very, very first puff stitch, you're going to yarn over three times. When I say three times, I mean this sort of sequence of yarn over, go in, come back through. 
and you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. So yarn over to complete the puff. And then we're going to chain three. So that chain two, because it comes out the side, makes this puff look, you can see it better on this one here, because that extra chain two on the side, it makes it look like it has got the same amount of yarn overs as all the others. In actual fact, you've just done one less because that chain two. So in every chain two space, all the way around, you're going to place one puff stitch, just one, and chain three in between. So into every chain two space, one puff stitch, chain three. And at the end of this round, you will have 16 puff stitch, and I will meet you back here to finish this round off. Okay, so that was my final puff stitch. I'm going to chain three. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch into this chain three space here. So don't join to this puff, this first puff, just join with a little slip stitch. And then before you cut your yarn, double check that you have 16 puff stitches. Oh, I lost count. <laughs> 50, 16. Okay, so you've got 16 puff stitches with chain threes all around. So you are good to go ahead and chain one, grab your scissors, snip your yarn, leaving a generous tail to weave in, pull it out and pull it tight. Now grab your joining colour and we can do the fourth and final round. So for my actual little sample piece that you saw in the beginning and indeed on the thumbnail, I used Shapier's Colour Crafter in Rotterdam. I've just dropped it. <laughs> just dropped it on the floor. So this is the colour I used to join this original sample piece. Now, because I'm going to be showing you A, how you do round four and B, how you join as you go, I'm actually going to do my final round on this little one we're making together using cream. So I'm using the shade Barnveld, my pronunciation is always off, to join this final round and show you how to join it as you go. You're free, of course, to be using any yarn that you like. So for your fourth round, we're going to be joining our new colour to any of these chain three spaces that you like, it doesn't matter where. So make a little slip knot, put your hook into one of these chain three spaces and pop the slip knot on your hook. Then you're going to bring that loop through the space to the front of your work. Now that knot will want to come through with you, but don't worry about that because when you weave in your ends, you can pull it back to the back. <laughs> So chain one, which does not count as a stitch, pull that knot out of the way, and you're going to place a single crochet straight into that chain three space where you just joined. So now you have your single crochet in the chain three space. We're going to be working immediately into the next chain three space to form the corner. So for the corners, it's four double crochet, a sort of modified chain three pico, which I will show you, and four double crochets. So we'll do this corner together. So straight into the next chain three space, four double crochet. Chain three. And then you're going to slip stitch, not into the third chain, like you usually would for a classic Pico, but into the front loop of that double crochet that you've just chained from. So just slip stitch. I know it's hard to see in cream, 
just slip stitch underneath that front loop. It just means that for this chain three is easier to access on your corners, particularly when joining, if it's a bit flatter and a bit looser. Then you're going to do four double crochet to finish off your corner. Now into the next chain three space, pop a single crochet. Then you're going to chain five and pop a single crochet into the next chain three space. Repeat that, chain five and pop a single crochet into the next chain three space. And then we are back to our corner. So four double crochet, chain three, slip stitch into the front loop of that double crochet stitch. give you a sort of flat pico and four double crochet. So if you were going to sew your squares together, you continue all the way round over to this side. So single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet. Then your corner, which is four double crochet, chain three, slip stitch into the front loop of your last double crochet, and then four more double crochet. Single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, etc. all the way around. And you would end with your final chain five with a slip stitch to this single crochet here. Now I'm going to be showing you how you join as you go. So how you attach these squares to your project as you're working on them. So I'm going to show you up to this point and then I'm going to show you how you attach as the join as you go. So if you're not wanting to join as you go, repeat this sequence here single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, and then your corner. Repeat that all the way around and end joining with a slip stitch. If you do want to join as you go, follow me and I will take you to this point and then we can join to over here. So because I am going to be joining on this side here, I need to finish up the one we're currently doing. So single crochet, chain five, Single crochet into the next chain three space, chain five, single crochet into the next chain three space. And now we're back to a corner. So I'm going to complete the first four double crochets. So I've done half my corner and I want to attach to this square here. So I have my four double crochets. I'm going to want to attach to here. So I'm going to chain one. Pick up the corner that you want to join to and find the chain three space on the corresponding corner. You're going to pop your hook into that chain three space. Now, I know it's hard to see on dark gray, but you can see it when you're working on your project. And I'm just going to pop a slip stitch through to join. Then chain one, and slip stitch to the front loop of that white double crochet. Then put four more double crochets 
into the chain th chain three space. And you have joined your first corner. Pop a single crochet to the next chain three space. And now we are going to join to the corresponding chain. So chain two, slip stitch to this chain space here, chain two. So that slip stitch counts as a chain. So you chain two, slip stitch, chain two, and now pop a single crochet into the next chain three space. Oops, <laughs> try and keep your work on your hook. And the same again, because we've got one more chain five space to attach to, so chain two, slip stitch, chain two, and then single crochet over here. So you can see for join as you go, you're substituting out, let me get rid of this tail here, which is really in the way, and that tail there. You're substituting out one of your chains for a slip stitch. So you join at the corner points and the side chain points. So when you stretch it out, you can see it's actually a very pretty lacy join. So if you wanted to block this, it would look absolutely beautiful as like a shawl or in a more sort of like a cotton. So I'll show you how you join to this corner here, exactly the same as before. So four double crochet. Chain one, find the corresponding corner, slip stitch, chain one, and then slip stitch that front loop. And finish with four double crochet into that corner space. So you can see it's attached at these points. Then you can go ahead and finish the rest of your square, a single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five. And to finish the round, slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet. Chain one. Cut yourself some yarn, leave a nice tail so you can weave it in, pull it up and pull it tight. So I hope you could follow all of that on the last round. I know I tried to cram in a lot of information there. If at any point I went too fast or you missed what I did, feel free to either rewind the video or up in the top here there are three dots where you can slow down the speed of the video. So if you need to put me in slow motion and have me sound like I am drunk, <laughs> that's fine. I know I went a little bit quick, but I'm kind of hoping that you guys totally understood exactly what I was doing for the join as you go and how you finish this round. So all the written instructions and all the yarn information and all of that jazz is over on my blog. I will leave a description in the box below. I will leave a link in the box below. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shout in the comments section. And I would love to know what you think of this beautiful little puff square. As I say, I think it would make a lovely shawl, especially if you made it in like a cotton or something like that and pinned it out and blocked it. It would look absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again on my channel very soon. Happy crocheting!